In this presentation, we will learn about an important concept in chemistry, which is electronic configuration. So I just want your undivided attention for the next few minutes. So we know that neutrons and protons are held in the nucleus by a strong force of attraction. And you should also understand that protons are the positively charged particles and there will definitely be a repulsive force just like the like poles repulsion in a magnet there will be a kind of repulsive force between the two like charges in the nucleus which are overcome by the neutral particles that is the neutrons which are present along with the protons and they also exist a strong electrostatic force of attraction between the protons which are positively charged and the electrons which are negatively charged so there exists a force of attraction that is called as electrostatic force between these unlike charges that is plus charge which is proton and the minus charge which is the electron and this electrostatic force of attraction holds the electrons in the orbit which is also called as the energy level. So just like the gravitational force which holds the moon around the orbit of earth, the electrostatic force holds the electron in its orbit. And there also exists a repulsive force between the like charges in the nucleus. So like charges will repel, unlike charges will attract. So this attractive force is a very strong electrostatic force which holds the electrons in the orbit just like the gravity that holds the planets or the satellites around the planet, right? So uh, in uh, the solar system, the planets cannot jump from one orbit to another or they cannot come back to the orbit but it is not so in an atom. The electrons can move from one orbit to another and they can come back to the same orbit by the release of energy, by the absorption of energy which you will learn in your higher classes. So we just have to remember that the protons cannot take part in any of the chemical reaction because they are strongly binded in the nucleus whereas the electrons can take part in the chemical reaction and so it is important to understand what an electronic configuration is. So configuration is nothing but the location of electrons around the nucleus in an atom that is in the orbit which is also called as electronic I mean energy level. So electronic configuration is the arrangement of electrons around the nucleus based on their energy level. So what is an energy level? It is nothing but the shells. So the first shell which is the K shell is called the first energy level. The L shell, the second shell is called the second energy level and the third shell M shell is the third energy level and the N shell is the fourth energy level. So we have the neutrons and the protons in the center which is the nucleus. So we are supposed to fill the electrons from inside out that is the first energy level should be filled first followed by the second, third and fourth which is the first rule that you have to understand while, fi while filling the electrons in the shells or energy levels. So the maximum, the second rule is the maximum number of electrons that a shell or a energy level can hold is given by the formula 2n to the power of 2. So we call it as 2 into n square. So n to the power of 2 is n square where n is the the number of the energy level. So K shell is the first energy level. So N is equal to 1. L shell is uh, the second energy level. N is equal to 2. And M shell is the third which is where N is equal to 3. And N shell is the fourth which is the fourth energy level. So N is equal to 4. So it is given by the formula 2 into N squared. So K is the first energy level. So N is equal to 1. So 2 into 1 square is 2. L shell 2 into second energy level. So N is equal to 2. 2 square. 2 square is 4. So 2 into 4 is 8 and 2 into 3 square. So third energy level N is equal to 3. So 2 into 3 square. 3 square is 9. 3 into 3 is 9. So 9 into 2 is 18. And for the N shell, it can hold 32 electrons. It is how 2 into N. N is equal to 4 to the power of 2. 4 4 are 16 and into 2 will give you 32. So K shell can hold, the first energy level can hold 2 electrons, the second energy level can hold 8 electrons, third which is the M shell can hold 18 and the N shell which is the fourth energy level can hold 32 electrons. So you remember the numbers if you cannot follow this formula 2 N square it is enough if you remember these numbers K 2 electrons, L 8 electrons, M 18 electrons and N 32 electrons. Now we will consider an example potassium where the symbol is K and Z is what, what is Z? 
it is the atomic number so what is z here it is 19 so where we have the electronic configuration arranged with 2 in the first shell 8 in the second shell and then 8 in the third shell but though we have 9 remaining so 2 plus 8 plus 9 remaining 9 cannot be accommodated in the third shell though it can hold 18 electrons so k shell 2 electrons maximum it can hold l shell can hold 8 electron m shell can hold 18 electrons but even then for potassium if m is the last shell it cannot hold more than 8 that is the third rule that you have to remember so we just write we just give 8 to the m shell and the remaining 1 to the n shell so this is the arrangement of electrons for potassium which is represented with the symbol K. So, 2881 is the electronic configuration of potassium. We have one more example of calcium with Z is equal to 20. So, Z is the atomic number. Number of protons is equal to number of electrons. So, number of electrons are 20. So, we write 2 in the first shell, 2 electrons in the first shell, 8 electron in the second shell and we have 10 more to be filled. But though M shell can hold 18 electron, we, you cannot have 10 in that because it is the last shell. So, we just write 8 here and the remaining 2 we take it to the last shell. So, I will repeat atomic number of calcium is 20. So, we can just write 2, 8, 10 but it is not possible. It is a rule that you have to understand because the last shell can hold only 8 electron and so though M shell can hold 18 electron we just give 8 and the remaining 2 we take it to the N shell so that is the representation of calcium atom here and so we have a special name for this outer shell which is called as valence shell it is because these valence this valence shell is away from the nucleus which has the protons so we know there is a force of attraction between the plus charge and the minus charge electron which is minus charge since it is the last shell it will experience the least force of attraction compared to the shells which are closer to the nucleus so the last shell are capable of taking part in the chemical reaction and so we have a special term for the last shell which is called as valence shell so the outermost shell of an atom is called valence shell and the electrons which are present in the outer shell is also called as valence electrons because they are the ones which will take part in the chemical reaction so now we have an example of oxygen with the atomic number 8. So we have 8 electrons. So first shell we have 2 and the remaining 6 in the second shell. So the L shell is the second shell which is the valence shell and we have 6 valence electrons for oxygen. And similarly for neon we have 10 as atomic number. So 10 electrons are present. So we have 2 in the K shell and the remaining 8 in the L shell. So L is the last shell which is the outermost shell which is also called as the valence shell for neon and the number of electrons are 8 in that L shell. So 8 valence electrons are present in neon. Hope you followed. It is a very important concept that you have to be thorough with. Thank you.